All right, so I'd like to welcome everyone to the February 18th, 2021 District Administrative Meeting, uh, Meet and Confer Negotiations. Uh, we are holding this meeting via Zoom. Um, it will be recorded and posted on the district YouTube channel. For the agenda, um, we had posted the agenda yesterday online, um, stating that it was, it was a Zoom meeting. Um, so I will go ahead and call the meeting to order. The next item is our norms. Um, so to raise your hand, um, to be able to be recognized uh, by CEA or the district team um, to speak, just turn your video on um, so that the uh, it's, it's known that you have something to say as we have um, several things to talk about um, this evening. Um, so that's really the major norm and we all know um, the other ones of, of being respectful, et cetera, and sticking to our time. Um, so the next item is the approval of the minutes from February 4th, 2021. Um, I would like to go ahead and move that we approve those minutes um, that are um, visible in the um, uh, meet and confer February 18th folder that you all have access to. Second. Is there any um, discussion, uh, Ms. Stevens, or are you good? All right, sounds good, thank you. So that motion carries approving the minutes from February 4th, 2021. Uh, the next item on the agenda is uh, typically new proposals, uh, but because of the special board meeting on February 4th, um, we did um, new proposals only then um, moving the, the pending proposals to February 18th, which is today. Um, so we will move right into pending proposals. Um, and the first one on the agenda um, is CEA proposed change to job classifications for ESPs. Um, and Michella, what I will do is turn it over to you to go through um, all of the CEA proposals um, and then what, um, and any questions and discussions that we are having, um, I will capture um, unless, um, um, Heidi, are you available to capture the, the questions and comments um, on the shared documents? Um, sure, I can do that. All right, well, I'll, I'll, start, I'll, I'll do it and let you know if, if I need you to jump in um, because that way, um, I can format it. I, th I just thought of that. I can format it like we did last year. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, thanks. All right, so Michelle, I will go ahead and turn it over to you. Thank you. So I'm just going through the ones we've proposed before. So our-, our yes, the, uh, the ones that are on the agenda. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, so our CEA, um, Apologies, give me one second. So our first one was our CEA proposed change to job classifications for ESB. And I apologize for asking yet again, but am I re-explaining these? Asking for questions? Uh, you can do a brief uh, re-explanation if you'd like, um, or just ask for questions. Um, okay, I'm gonna respect time real quick. <laughs> um, do I have any questions or would anyone like any clarifications um, on the CEA proposed change to job class classifications for ESB? I guess one one question uh, that I have, um, and you know, others please, please jump in as well. Um, the, um, what is the intended purpose of this? Like, what what is the, the we want to do this? I know there's a rationale on here, but where did like why did you pick these ones, and what what is your intended outcome of that? I will. We um, leaned on Arizona Education Association um, and use their job classifications. Uh, to kind of guide us, because I know that we were working on classifications on our own and 
pandemic year. Um, so we were leaning on AEA's classifications that they have to help um, basically classify our ESP. And if Alex can hop in and give us the why, that'd be great. Hi, Alex, got to this speaking to the chair. So the reasoning behind this job classification, um, originally there was a survey intended to go out um, around the area and to, uh, it's pretty much just to define each job position properly the way AEA and ADE has it set up. Um, in this way, it can be more clear and uh, precise as to what each job description and job function does. Also, it should have, um, adjusted the pay rates for those hourly positions of wealth to compete with other positions in the area. And this, so this, this would not, I mean, this, the proposal could, if it was approved and then, you know, approved by the governing board um, would have, it would just change the, the titles um, the the compensation would have to go through the the you know proper process. It wouldn't automatically up 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 pay or anything like that because the um, there's a there's an ESP salary schedule. Correct. Yeah. I mean, following the completion of the job classification survey, the following steps would have been to re uh, adjust the salary schedule for ESPs or the step schedule. Pardon for the ESPs. Uh, this is Victoria. I have a question. I'm driving right now, so I don't have my camera on. Can I can I go ahead and speak? By all means. Thank you. Um, I I don't have the the folder open. Obviously, I was working on bond stuff to, uh, this week, and I apologize. Are is your proposal for all classified, or is it just a certain list of classified, certain ones? It would be for all uh, ESP staff. And is part of the proposal to modify the salary schedule columns? In theory, Or is that yes. separate? No, no, no. It's, so, in, that, it, so that's a separate proposal or is that attached it, to this one? No, it, it would be a separate proposal. First, we'd start by completing the job classification, getting all the proper job um, descriptions in place. Followed by that would be another proposal adjusting the uh, the ESP step ladder to compete with other positions in the area. Is um, part of your proposal also updating job descriptions? Yes. And what is your target date for implementation? Well, originally this was supposed to be done last year, but due to the whole COVID-19 um, issue, we kind of, uh, it was postponed by the district. Um, so, you know, it's, it's still a pending matter. Once we're able to get this job survey done, uh, then we'd follow the classification proposal, followed by the uh, ESP salary, or sorry, stepladder adjustment. Okay, because I know I've been doing a lot of work on this. So if I'll have to see what you've done to compare it to what I've done, because if they're not aligned, then we'll just have to decide which one we're gonna go with. Yeah, I mean, we can definitely, um, you know, compare notes and, and what we have just to, you know, in the in all good faith, just to make sure that everything's done properly and accordingly. That way, no one, no ESP is left unnoticed or, you know, behind. Okay. And, and I think, Thank you. Um, I, I captured the notes on the shared document. Um, so we'll, you know, we can move on from this one since obviously there's some further discussion that we need to have after, you know, more review, et cetera. Um, so I will make sure that it's on the March 4th um, agenda as well. Definitely, thank you. I believe Mr. Bishop has his hand raised. Oh, sorry, I can't, uh, you can, where is he? Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, All right, so my question real quick on this, and it's kind of a follow-up to what Victoria said is, is if we use these titles, to reclassify people and then we do the pay scales later as a separate issue. Could that affect the way people are paid? So here's an example. Um, I know that these are general terms, the way people are classified ESP wise, but like in buildings and operations, we have a locksmith. That's a pretty specific thing. And 
their, their pay scales will be compared to other locksmiths, so to speak. Under this proposal, just so I understand it, just based on just that one job description, where would they fit in that? How would how would their pay be compared based on the the, the generalized titles that are uh, that are in each section, so to speak? I guess is the best way to say it. Does that make sense? It does. No. So, from my understanding, the way this was going to work out would be we would compare salaries in the area, um, and then we would place them into the uh, ESP step. Uh, schedule and we'd go from there so there's no real like real set position for this it's just we're going to compare we're going to place you know where the locksmith goes and after following the um the uh drawing blanks i'm sorry <laughs> following the completion of the uh, step salary schedule for esps then their pay would be adjusted if needed but for the most part, it, it would update job description, job titles. It's not going to change most of them. I mean, a locksmith is obviously a, a locksmith, but, you know, there's other ESP positions out there that, you know, would benefit from having this job survey done, this job reclassification, I mean. Okay, thank you. Our next one was, uh, or any questions or... Um, clarifications for the CEA proposed addition to counselor evaluations? I'm gonna keep on talking, yes? Um, let, me, let me take a quick look here. At the, uh, I'm trying, to, it's, everything is running slow. So, and if we, if we need a reminder, I, if. Courage is annual training. So what is the, the addition on here that Gia, can I have you speak to this one? Hi, uh, good evening. Uh, Giovanna Giosa speaking to the chair. Um, so could you repeat your question again, sir? Uh, just what the addition is. Oh, so the um, addition is that um, the current School, uh, school counselor evaluation is that of the uh, teacher's evaluation and school counselors, according to the Arizona Department of Education are non-teaching. Um, so some of the standards that the counselors are evaluated on have more to do with like state standards uh, for teaching around core content, for example, and we don't perform those kinds of duties. So this one would be in addition because it's um, it's really adding, you know, qu um, mm -hmm. columns for what it is that the counselors actually do. So it's evaluating our actual day-to-day -day practice, our day-to-day -day duties and tasks um, that are relevant to us. So the, the, I guess, I, I mean, I was just asking for, for those listening, um, the addition is the whole thing. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Does anyone from the district board team have any comments or questions on this? Um, if if we move forward with this proposal, um, would there be flexibility? Could we add some language at the bottom that just says, um, you know, the the concept itself will be used, but we can work together as like a task force or a committee to maybe tweak some of the language overall like as we review it and, you know, kind of just talk through. I think much like the, um, the ESP evaluation that we would, we would welcome that. I, I need you to nod at me to see, <laughs> um, but I do believe, yes. 
that would definitely work. And I just um, want to note that uh, about three years ago, a committee of school counselors did already work on this. Oh, and I'm, yeah, I don't mean a, like a full blown go, I mean like, you know, meet about it once and, mm -hmm. and just make sure that it's, um, you know, so like a, maybe a, a principal can review it um, and have someone that would be completing it review it also. Um, just, just overall, but I, I don't, I don't see any issues. Um, if, if no one else um, from the board team doesn't, um, so I'm just gonna. Were there any other questions on this particular proposal? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just added that note. Um, I think you can see that, uh, Michella, on the bottom. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to go ahead and. Sorry, mine's taking time to load as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. Took a long time to say yes. Thank you. Yes. No problem. So if you wanted, do you want me just to type on there for you? Yes, please. Okay. I'm going to, the next one was um, CEA proposed addition to staff reduction, um, reduction in force for ESPs. And I believe, yes, uh, any questions or clarifications? I know when we last spoke, it uh, there was a recommendation of possibly changing some of the, the requirements or the top, what we're giving points based on, but the first one is for a staff reduction and force for ESP. And this is very similar to the current one for um, certified, correct? Yes. So I think the I think the question was the like the like the school leadership positions and those those types of things, um, but that doesn't mean it can't be on here. Um, that was just the note here was the possibly. Taylor, I think, I don't know if you put that or if I did, I can't remember. Um, but so with this then, you, you would be wanting this to be um, in the handbook, correct? Going forward, is that? Yes. Okay. Um, is there any um, questions or concerns about this? Um, Casey Newman, principal at Pena. So I was looking more at the reduction in force of certified of the change of the um, possible conduct points, the 10 or professional conduct points of 10. And since this is a new document with the ESPs, um, my concern is based on the one to two reprimands. When you go from the certified, it was a deduction in five points in the past and CEA is proposing one to two reprimands, which means a district file it goes into is only deducted two points. Uh, my concern is in order to get to a reprimand, it, it's a continuing thing or it could be a one-time serious thing. And I think the deduction of two points um, or up to two reprimands, I, I just really question that.
Go ahead, Giovanna. Hi, good evening. Um, so could you uh, clarify your exact question, Mr. Newman? Because I don't want to, I, what I'm interpreting is that perhaps this isn't um, equitable, how the points are distributed just for that one portion. Am I interpreting that correctly, sir? Yes, just in the professional conduct of 10 points, going from the five points in the past of per offense mm -hmm. um, to now you could get up to two reprimands, which again, a uh, reprimand is, you know, you've talked to the person, it depends what it is, but for it to get to that. And when we look at reduction in staff, I think in my mind, um, we want the highest qualified across the district that are staying with us if we need to lose staff. And so in order to um, keep that, if, as you look and total up all the other points and the scenarios that you could go through from your possible 50 points, whether you have a highly effective teacher, but their school's um, scores may not be highly effective, which knocks them down to an effective teacher and they lose 10 points there. I'm just really concerned that when you get into letters of reprimand, um, it is a serious infraction. So documenting two point, docking two points from somebody, I don't feel is gonna keep um, the highest quality employees and teachers that we want in Cartwright, if we ever do have to go to a reduction in force. Right, I can see that concern. Um, Betsy. Mm -hmm. Hi, this is Betty France, I'm speaking. Um, I think the big point we were going there is we did not want this to be an excuse for someone to just have a lot of reprimands and um, that would be avoiding the process. Um, basically, um, a RIF is not a time to say, okay, you have a lot of reprimands, you know, and it takes away from the process. Um, because usually there's, if someone's really having that much of a problem, there's already stuff happening at that point. Victoria, did you have something to add or ask? Yes, I do have a question. Thank you, Tom. Um, for ESPs, especially for ESPs and, and non-teacher non positions, the district has to maintain flexibility on any budget reductions, especially when we're on current year funding. So I can't be, and I, I cannot legally be as a CFO restrained based on a document from CEA on what would need to be done to keep us budget sound. Does that make sense? It, it, it does make sense. And I don't think that's what it's saying. This is just the process for when you are reducing staff. Like okay. once it's determined, just like the RIF rubric for certified teachers. Right, no, the certified makes sense. I don't understand the reason for a rubric for an ESP. The concept, I don't understand. The, I don't understand it conceptually, but I'll just, uh, I'll ponder that one on my own a little bit more. We, and we do currently have in the handbook, um, Reduction in force for both certified and um, ESP. This would this is offering changes. Yes, it, I think it, you're going for like a scoring system. Yes. Okay. So um, that it reflects like yes. G, I'm sorry, Gia has her hand. Hi. So, um, so we do have a RIF for certified, um, and that is important for us when we're um, considering different. Uh, budgets and things like that. But we also want to make it equitable and fair for our ESPs as well. So that's why we've created a RIF for the ESPs. So there's this sound process for when you're considering reducing staff due to a, a reduction in funding or what have you, then you have this laid out process. And so if you look at the certified RIF, uh, currently, a certified individual um, has the potential to earn up to 150 mm -hmm. points on the RIF scale. And um, 
the ESPs just do not have as many opportunities. So that's why we kind of changed a little bit of how you add up the points. Um, and so if you look at the RIF that we've proposed, um, it has 60 points that an individual who is an ESP um, can earn up to. So we've kind of made a slide a little bit to accommodate for, um, you know, what would have been 150 points for a certified is now uh, 60 for an ESP because uh, they don't always have the same um, opportunities or job tasks that a certified is. Um, so they, if we used the certified for an ESP, that would not be equitable because there just are not some opportunities that they would have. Um, like the paid leadership committees, um, which is an extra bonus points. So the certified would have been able to earn an extra 20 points um, on top of the um, 100, I believe it is that they can earn already without the bonuses. Um, there's also five points bonus mm -hmm. on the RIF for a national board certificate. And um, an ESP, that's not mandatory for their job. So we kind of accommodated to tease out some of these things that just would not be relevant for an ESP. And then we included things that would be relevant for them. So does that clarify a little bit? It, it does. However, I, I believe where um, Victoria is also heading is if we're saying we have to riff certified teachers, they're all certified teachers. When we're talking about ESPs, you, you have people across many different categories. Not that there's not different categories of teachers and certifications, those types of things. It's just more specific. So I think we want we will need to come back to this one um, and add something about that um, because um, they're just so there's so many different um, positions. You know, you do you under, you know what I mean with that? We do, and also the if we can, like you're adding, uh, account for the different roles. Um, also, the idea that last year we combined these handbooks, and so we, as um, Gia stated, having the same. I mean, opportunities, opportunities is the wrong word to use uh, regarding RIF, but the same opportunities as our certified staff. So having something, um, a rubric that can be followed as well was important to our ESP staff. Understood. Uh, Mr. Bishop? I just have a quick question and then uh possibly a comment. So um, we talked about this one uh, a couple of meetings ago, and I want to make sure that I'm correct before I make a comment. So uh, if you talk about tradespeople, like in a building and operations employment uh, situation, they're considered ESPs as well, right? Correct. Okay. So um, respectfully back to my comment when this first came out, uh, if, if we have somebody who has, say, worked in that environment or been a lead custodian at a school for 30 years and they know their campus inside and out and you cannot basically uh, compare that level of experience at that location with anything that might be educational, my opinion only, um, it is conceivable based on reading this that somebody that's been around for two years could get more, way more points uh, the way this is written. And, and please correct me if I'm wrong, than somebody that might have been there 30 years. Uh, and if there's another area of this that I'm missing that says that, that uh, somebody's tenure or uh, experience, and not just seniority for seniority's sake, but experience at a certain location, you know, does comes into play, please guide me to that because I might be missing that. But it looks to me like based on education, based on uh, other opportunities that that uh, at least I know some of the ESPs don't have opportunities to participate in, uh, it, it does seem like it would be way more possible for somebody based on education to outscore somebody based on experience. All 
right. Thank you, uh, Victoria. Thank you. And, and to go um, to piggyback on Bill Bishop, if we're having a rift situation, those, those are 99.9% .9 tied to student count. So if I have, have hey, let, let's just go off the extreme example, we're closing a campus. That wouldn't affect the locksmith because we still have to have a locksmith that's running and that, that has to do duties district wide. I wouldn't get rid of a locksmith or riff a locksmith because that's the one, one of the specialized positions. So I'm just, I, I understand that the equity part of it, but we have to make sure that we're including other factors besides points. Because like, like Tom said, you know, there are just so many different types of positions that are either district based or department based or school based like bus drivers okay so let's let's say that we're going to close a school does that mean we get rid of bus drivers that's a hard to fill position i, I don't under, i guess i'm having a hard time linking the two uh, the need to have a a policy or a process for esps on risk i'm just having a hard time conceptualizing it and, and that's why we'll we'll come back to it and add some um, things into the as kind of a counter proposal or just some added language for um, next time. Right. Right, did you raise your hand again, Victoria, or is that the same one? I don't know. No, I'm trying to take it down. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and then one thing to go to back to Mr. Newman's point. Um, I don't, I'm, I'm just simply, I'm going to highlight this section and think more about it with the professional conduct. Um, because I, I mean, I don't even think we should account for someone having that many reprimands because they shouldn't, that should never happen. So that's just my highlighted note on there. And then I'll have this one on the, the next agenda as well. So just so I'm I'm understanding new process. Mm -hmm. uh, our hi your highlighted sections. Those are, are just all that all that is is I'm just that's how I'm taking notes. So when I okay. do the current <laughs> proposal, um, the updated one will be in the um, folder for March fourth. Okay. All right. Our um. Next on the list was number four with the CEA proposed change to classified evaluations, which right now we are in, we we're in a task force, correct? Correct. So if I'm giving an update, it's an awesome task force, things are getting done. <laughs> All right, uh, perfect. Cool. Yep. Uh, number five, yeah. CEA proposed change to certified reduction in four. So, um, same, but different. <laughs> Questions or clarifications on that one? Just the same, uh, Mr. Hancock, will you highlight that the reprimand part in this certified one? That was more my... And, and, you, yeah, and you can see it as well, if you want okay. to highlight it. Um, oh, down here. Okay, yeah. And I'm not seeing, let's see. I'm just looking at some of this stuff in the bottom. Okay. All right, I understand all that. Okay, all right. Got it, thank you. Hold on, many tabs. Um, yeah. Number six was a CEA proposed name um, to change from auxiliary, I always say it wrong. Uh, nope, I'm not saying it wrong. CEA proposed name to change auxiliary, auxiliary length, salary language. I'm not allowed to talk anymore. <laughs> um, questions or 
on so, that one, not yeah, pronunciation. Yeah, no problem. Um, so just so instead of having the title of the auxiliary salary schedule being called the auxiliary salary schedule, the proposal is to change it to related service providers and psychologists. To right. so much like we did with classify or classified to ESP, we would like. Um, that one to be changed to related service providers and psychologists. Okay. And um, yes. okay. Um, I don't, I mean, this is just a title change on the salary schedule, Victoria, do or anyone else, do you see any issues with this? Um, no, it's Victoria. I don't see an issue, but can we just label it RSP? Do we have to add psychologists separately? I think our psychologists definitely want to be recognized uh, um, as well, but we can definitely take that back to our folks and see how they feel on that. Just, yeah, just curious, thank you. Okay, so we will. Um... Okay, you can you can go to your next one. I'm gonna let Gia go ahead. Sorry, um, just one note on why we wanted to separate out the school psychologists is because um, when you have individuals who want to apply to our district and they are school psychologists, it makes it easier for them to find our salary schedule, um, and that is another incentive um, to have it listed as related service provider and school psychologist. So it's for incoming people also. Okay, then, then would it make sense to just separate them out completely? Do related service providers on one salary schedule and psychologists on their own? We did. It was, yes. I'm good with that. Okay. So on this, I know I had a question about the, so, so there, I know there was some further discussion, if I'm not mistaken, um, regarding the, the $3,000 premium should be potentially rolled into the base, not the bilingual psychologist type and potentially rolled into the base. Oh, are we on? Yeah, we're on the salary schedule. Okay, hold on. I'm still on name change. If you don't mind, if we have if we have questions on the um, proposed related service step salary schedule and the one for psychologists, we do have someone that is chomping at the bit to answer questions. Can we bring her in? Yep. Okay. One second. <laughs> As, I'm, as she's making her way on, um, can we also have her on if there are any questions basically for both salary schedules since? Yes, if, if someone could please like take on some of the note taking though, because me having to call on everyone and gotcha. do all uh, that. Shelly, can I nominate you to take over for notes? Yep, just give me one second to get to the Thank you. document. Are we on the psychologist or the RSP one? Let's start with the R RSP. Okay. If 
it would help, would you like me to um, keep track of who would like to speak? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. I was just told she's here. There she I'm is. Here. Um, I'd like to introduce uh, Amy Jo Green, and she is here for all questions related to. We're going to start with RSP, um, step salary, and then into psychologist. So, any questions? She will gladly take. Well, and when you say um, the first one we're talking about, it's just a title change, correct? Yes. Okay. But I, are we still on that one? I just want to make sure because um, we were talking about the title change and then uh, then we were talking money. Oh, I, I see what you, yes. Okay, I got you. So we're, you, I, I see where we're at. Never mind. My mistake. Okay. So I, I, I believe your question had, do you mind restating your question, Mr. Hancock? No, go ahead. I don't remember your question. Oh, which, which one are we, which one do you want to talk about? You were asking about the 3,000. Oh, so this, the psychologist salary schedule you want to go to first? We can. Well, that's where the $3,000 question is. Then yes, we'll start with that one. <laughs> okay. um, so I was just, and I'm glad um, Amy's here. Um, Amy, can you tell me the part um, with what your email referred to? Sure. So um, all of the psychologists and the RSPs get a hard to fill stipend, but on the salary schedule, it's stated as $3,000 premium. Mm -hmm. So part of the proposal was to, if accepted, to roll that into the base salary and extinguish it as a stipend. And um, on the psychologist, it had accidentally been pasted on the, the row right above it, which was bilingual psychologist, which we don't want to get rid of that. God bless our Spanish speakers. We need them. Um, so it would just apply to the 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 three thousand dollar premium, which is um, uniform across all psychologists. So it's not like some would get it, some wouldn't. So rolling it into the base would be a, a uniform change for everyone. And the same with the RSPs. Okay, so the the RSP proposal has no numbers on it as far as salary schedule. So that's why I don't. That we have we haven't got to yet, so I'm I'm only right now asking about the psychologist. Oh document. sure. So it's you want included in the base next to the bilingual one also. Is that the proposal? No, just the just the three thousand dollar premium because all psychologists get that. Oh, and then the, the, the that bilingual. have criteria like you have to have your national cert or you have to be bilingual. They're not uniform, so we we don't want them rolled in because that wouldn't be fair for people. It would just be um, the the premium of the hard to fill stipend. Gotcha. And um, I, that was that was my only question on there. I just wanted to make sure I captured what you had said uh, correctly. Sure. Um, the, um, I will, I have to, I'd like to defer to, uh, Victoria to, because it's a salary schedule um, sure. conversation. Okay. This is Victoria. Hi. I had to find a new button. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm driving and I've got kids sleeping in the back seat, so I want to keep them quiet while I can, well, so the, I can do this. <laughs> the money talk will put them to sleep for sure. So we're good. Oh, trust me, it will. <laughs> um, no, I, I, yeah, I'm okay with putting the, the $3,000 premium onto the base. I'm more interested in understanding, because I had asked that question too, you know, why wasn't it added to the base? But I just want to make sure that before we, before we move forward with that, that maybe someone can answer or knows why it was separated out. Oh, I think sure. I have been around long enough to be able to speak to that. So I, I joined CAR8 in 2009 um, and we had a lot of psychology. I think we had more contract psychologists than we did district employee psychologists. Um, and we were in the throes of the 2008 
um, you know, money freeze. So M and O didn't have money to increase our salary to make it more competitive to get rid of a bunch of contractors because in the long run, contractors are kind of a, a budget budget situation and they're not steadily employed every year, you know, like district employees. So what they did was um, make stipends out of the special ed department to try to make our salary more competitive because it just wasn't an option from m and at that point was my understanding. I mean, I wouldn't swear on a Bible to that, but the timing makes sense and the explanation made sense to me at that point. So I believe that that's how we ended up with our with our current system. And that makes 100% sense. And that's what I have would have guessed. So um, I'll have to look at the salary schedule as it's written. I don't mind putting it in the base. But I also have to be clear on the schedule that 3000 of the base is subject to appropriation. It can't be, a, if, if that's the case, I, I'm not comfortable at this time making that a guaranteed commitment. Okay. Uh, for some of us that don't have all the vocabulary words today, when, what appropriation means? Victoria. I want to be able to be flexible and, and okay, so this is a side conversation, but everybody knows that we are down a lot of kids, and I can tell you we're down millions right now because of, first of all, carrying your funding, second of all, distance learning, third of all, charter schools, and fourth of all, we're not going back to school. So I can list a number of reasons and how it's going to impact us, but what I can say is that it's, my, it's, it's a district's responsibility to make sure that we're fiscally sound. And I don't want to say, okay, we're going to go ahead and so we're paying it, we're paying it now. That, that, that's fine that we're paying a $3,000 premium. But I don't want to say that MO, we're going to be guaranteed to pay this out of MO. If, if it comes that it has to be paid out of IDEA, then that's fine. If IDEA can't support it and m and can't support it, then it's got to go away. It's got, we, the district has to have that flexibility. So the first option would be out of m and if available. The second option would be to see if IDEA can fund it. And then the last option would be that it would not be funded. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I feel comfortable with that. Obviously, I would have to talk to the group, but... I believe we've captured that in notes. Um, so we'll keep going with questions. I, I do not have any further questions and I don't see any hands raised. So that was our proposed uh, psychologist salary schedule that we, we were speaking to. And we also have our um, proposed related service step salary schedule. Do we have any clarification or questions needed on that one? I, th I think it would be the, the, the same just um, with Victoria uh, looking through it um, and bringing it back uh, on the fourth with any um, of her money thoughts there. Money thoughts, like it. Um, Sorry, and then um, and we started this one with the um the name change, and I, I think we we're okay with questions on that one. Okay, well then, we'd like to thank Amy Joe for joining us. Yes, thank you. Appreciate very it. Thank much. you. No problem. I'm going back to my pajamas, people. All right. <laughs> thank you. The next one on there is um. Whoa. Okay. Uh, CEA proposed change to the evaluation of professional staff members. Yeah, 
I, 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 we don't need to discuss this one uh, very long. It's a, it's a, no, we're not because it's statutorily is 45 days and we're gonna, we're gonna stay with that. So, okay. Right. Right. Thank you. And the next one on the, oh. I think that was it. For... Woo <laughs> So we still have, you know, several of those to to um, discuss, um, which I will uh, move all of those, keep them as pending. Um, the one was approved, so we don't need to go back to that one. Um, the evaluation days was um, denied, so we'll um, not worry about that one. Um, so I will go ahead. Um, I just want to make sure I'm following the agenda correctly. I don't can't see it. All right, so let me just check my order real quick. Okay, so um, basically what I'll do, um, Michella, is, you know, we had kind of described these, so I'll just um, name it and then um, you can ask your questions and if uh, um, the notes can be taken, that would be, that would be great. Um, so uh, the first one is the proposed, uh, district board proposed change to the longevity program. So for this one, we are um, actually don't let me speak out of turn. Mr. Hancock, I believe the next one was the 10 month work calendars on the agenda. There we go. <laughs> oh, yes, you're right. It was on. The Thank top. you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So the, um, the did you have any questions about this particular proposal? We did. I'm going to call on Alex. Good afternoon, Alex, again, speaking to the chair. So I do have one question. Um, I will say though, I am really loving this proposal right now. A lot of nine month ESPs have been looking to change to 10 months. Um, but my one concern is, um, will I see that for spring break, it's there, it, there's a note saying that they will not be paid, um, but it shows that they'll be paid from the 7th to the 10th, except for March 11th which is a Friday, is there any reason behind that? And also, will ESP be required to work at all for uh, spring break? And I'm sorry, give me one second. Uh, for winter break or, and spring break? Uh, I, can, I can answer that. So the asterisk uh, next to spring break um, only uh, applies to that Friday. Um, and it has to do with the number of days um, throughout the 10 months. Um, and then the, um, the winter break and spring break, um, there is no work uh, requirement. Those are paid breaks. Perfect, that's, I, I love it. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, so I will, with that, I will uh, pass it back to Machella and. But I, I, oh, hold on, sorry. Let me raise my hand. Oh, go ahead. Thank you. But I do have a comment that, that just for everyone to keep in mind, especially you, Bill Bishop, when you're wanting to get projects done, um, there's might be some some uh, issue of making sure that we can get things done over winter break because that's been a problem with business services, trying to get things done over winter break when we gave everybody the two weeks off. So just be aware that, that, that you're gonna probably have to schedule your projects around projects around the breaks. If I can add to that, um, since I know there will be projects needed to be done during these break times and according to this uh, proposal, those will be uh, paid holidays. Will they be paid uh, time and a half for working during these vacation hours? If you want to add that, if we need to add that to the proposal, we can. But I'm going to have to, uh, yeah. Let me let me mull that over um, and add something to the proposal for March. Great, thank you. Um, since since there's mulling over involved, um, we will. Those that's it for our questions on this one. Thank you. All right, so then I will move on 
to the next one, which is the district board proposal for the longevity program. I'm gonna pass this on to Betty. Betty, I know has questions. Oh, yes. Um, Betty France speaking to the chair. Um, well, I have four questions, but the first question is, um, has our district received a fine for longevity? Yes. Okay. Um, was it due to like a gift of public funds? No, it's a, it's a violation of statute um, because the individual that caused the fine, um, the, the cap that you can earn in your, as an increase in the last three to five years of your employment with ASRS is 30% because our longevity program sits exactly at 29. If someone retires in that period of time, then they are, we, we would be, you know, violating that, that statute. Um, and the, the statute has been a relatively recent change. It's not, it's not something that's been going, like the, the law wasn't the same the entire time. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, what funding source is used to pay for longevity? MNO funds. MNO, okay, yeah. Um, do you know about how many people will be receiving um, this for next year? How many people will it affect? I, I, I do not, off the top of my head, I'd have to think that. Yeah. Because they wouldn't have told us yet. Oh, okay. Like we wouldn't, we haven't gone through it yet because we have, we're looking at this proposal. Oh. Uh, I wanna say it's probably, I mean, it's, you know, it's pretty significant. 15 to 20, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of them. Yeah. Um, are there, um, there's a part where um, there is like a severance um, if you um, retire after you receive your longevity, um, then you would receive it and there would be a um, stipulations. Um, is there, I'm trying to think of the right way, are there stipulations attached? Um, after you sever your um, relationship with the district. It's in the proposal that you would be severing and I was wondering if there are stipulations attached to it. Well, that, that means you would not be employed by the district anymore. So, oh. and so when you do that, you know, that would be the situation where someone was going um, to an ESI program or um, like leaving, leaving. So that, or if someone wanted to pick that option, they certainly could. Uh, but then you wouldn't be employed and then and what and you, you so and that severance piece does not go towards the asrs calculation right um there was another part where you were saying um when i was reading it it said that they had to um if they wanted to continue working mm -hmm. they would work for three years and mm -hmm. then receive the additional um part you know where you broke it in half after three years, they would receive the rest. Um, what happens if they can some, they're in an accident and they're not able to continue to work for those three years? Um, so that's not exactly what it says. So I just wanna clarify, um, they, they do not, so you continue working um, for the, the three years after you receive the payment, you don't receive the payment at the end of those three years. Oh, okay. Because you'd have to, because that would, be the same thing if you did that. Um, the the other part of that that would be on a case by case basis, just like now. If someone gets um, in an accident in the middle of their 25th year, they didn't finish 25 years. So that you know we have to look at it now. I know what you're asking is if they receive the money and then get you know. So that's something that we would you know there's risk in going that route also. Thank you. You're welcome. And I think Victoria, you had your hand up. I do. Uh, just uh, we're, I was running some general numbers and longevity for next year. I'm projecting it to be no less than $900,000 out of MNL. Because I know you're asking about the numbers of budgets. So I was just kind of sharing that as an FYI. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's it for our questions on longevity. Okay, thank you. 
All right, so if, the... Uh, I'm sorry, Tom, if, if I can ask, um, can I ask one more clarifying question? I'm sorry, I'm gonna backtrack on this about the 10-month uh, uh, ESP adjustment. Um, this question is more directed toward uh, Victoria and, uh, and uh, Mr. Bishop. And it's mostly just, are there any nine or 10 month ESP employees at the moment? I thought all BNO employees were uh, 12 month employees, to my understanding. That's correct. Yes, they are, but we we have a tendency to use like, like summer workers and temporary workers to help during those breaks. So that will, that, as that will go away. And for the budgetary reasons, that, is, that extra assistance won't be there anymore. So if there's an, and, and if there's a need, see right now 12 month workers have vacation. So they work, they work those periods, but even though being like, okay, let's not, let's not talk about, you know, let's talk about business services. Even though all of our staff for 12 months, because of the change that was made, they no longer, have to use vacation days to take those two weeks off during Christmas. So that's two weeks of extra time that they're not working. So just, just we just have to be, pay very close attention to how we structure those schedules because if you're looking for somebody and we haven't done it correctly, then not, there's not gonna be anybody there to, to do what we might need them to do. That's what, that, that was what I just wanted to make sure everybody had, kind of was thinking about as we do a comprehensive look at this change, because we didn't look at that, at least I didn't look at that when we made the decision via meet and conferred to give all 12 month employees the whole winter break off. Got it, thanks, that's all I needed to know. Thank you so much. All right, well, I will go ahead and move on to um, the next one. Uh, substitute uh, district board proposed change to substituting for medical insurance. Um, at this time, we don't have any questions to ask on this one or any comments. Thank you. And the next one is district board proposal for teacher lunchtime. Again, we are we are reviewing this one as well and we'll we'll be ready at our next meeting. All right, sounds good. And the last one I believe is the last one is the district board proposed change to prep time. I don't know if it's more of a statement, <laughs> um, but our, our team uh, suggests to look at the allocation of days and follow the current policy. Currently there are 250 minutes of site-based collaboration on a Friday with the exception of teacher work days and district professional development days. There are 10 Fridays that are teacher work days and four district PD days that were negotiated for last year. In the 2020-2021 school year calendar, um, it lists 10 work days and six PD days. If we observe the original 10 work days and four district PD days, it would provide an additional 500 minutes that administrators could use for site-based collaboration time. And by definition in the current policy, it does state that this time can be used for grade level planning, team level planning, department planning, site-based, whole staff professional development, community build, building activities and other needs as determined by the site administrator. It was. It was also mentioned in a previous meeting that having the PD at the beginning of the day would allow for administrators to help guide teachers in determining what needs to be accomplished. And while teachers respect the opinions of their administrators, policy does state currently that the time at the beginning of the day should usually be used for uninterrupted professional prep time. Adding more time for site-based collaboration, the Friday workday would be extended to approximately 5 p.m. to accommodate the additional time that was requested in the proposal as it is written. And so at the time, the CEA team is choosing to decline this proposal at this time. Uh, Mr. Newman. Mitchell, a question on the last statement. 
5.30 p.m. and then also the beginning of the workday, you stated that, where is that statement about teacher having their prep time at the beginning? So I know that the prep time at the beginning is under this, from the proposal or the, what was negotiated last year um, under the sample schedule. Um, so it is a sample schedule that was provided. Uh, the 5 p.m. would be if the proposal that was presented uh, would be followed. So our biggest, our biggest thing that we did notice um, and that we hope everyone does notice is that what is negotiated is the 10 teacher work days and the four district professional de um, development days. And this year, which is the first year in its implementation, it still has the 10 work days, but we are using six professional development days. And that's where, where we can possibly find the missing minutes. Um, so yes, that's a sample work date. That was those time were constraint. That was just broken down cleanly to show what a day would look like. Um, that's why I say sample. So the principals had the discretion of how to use your minutes throughout the day site based. Um, just clarifying some things to looking at it as a PLC um, district. And again, building that community with your staff. If you go back and you look through the whole calendar, in the first quarter, you have two blended days. Um, and that means your whole staff. Second quarter, one, third quarter, two, fourth quarter, five, for a total of 10 blended days where you have your whole staff. Not the blended days where all non-classroom, then you have your ISSs, behavior specialists, counselors um, off campus. So this is just guaranteeing that every week, you're able to um, set the tone and build that community, whether it's team building when we get back in person, um, this online um, has really been hard to do that because again, this third quarter, I've seen my whole staff for twice. I've been able to get them all together. Again, the 10 work days, and I was not part of this team last year, uh, the 10 work days continued from the year before which was, um, you know, the Thursdays after duty, your work day would start about 135 to 320 on contract hours. We looked at the, those hours last time, I think it was a total of now it's 66 hours with your hour lunch on Fridays and you, it was 17.5 hours throughout. So it is a plus 48.5 hours this year. Also on the Fridays, since we will be continuing this calendar year next year, you have those, and I'm looking at it, two and a half hours of prep time, along with the, let's say your site um, takes one of the preps through Monday through Thursday to 40 minutes. So now you have the 200 and, or what is it? 150 minutes on Friday. And then you also have 120 minutes, three 40 minute preps during the week. So again, total, I would have to do the math that, that I need a calculator for that. But the minutes are totally and again, it is building the community um, on on campus. At times, I would hope our, our schools are at different needs. And um, as a team driving the professional development with your leadership team on your campus to really focus on those needs is I think what we're looking for. I would just like to say, um, of course, we recognize the need for our, our administrators to uh, bring whole staff together. And I think part of what we're looking at, or that maybe we all need to look at is that every site is approaching this um, in a different manner. So I do know that there are some sites that hold uh, staff meetings and uh, site-based collaboration on a different day in the morning before uh, our workday begins. Um, some have a standing day throughout the week, as long as it, if they have, if we, if they're losing that Friday time, I, I do believe that each side is seeking different ways to use the time that they are given. I do know that last year's team worked really hard to, to uh, 
respect the time that that our staff is giving to grading to getting everything prepared uh, ahead of time and that our the teacher prep time is important for the teachers to use as they I guess as they see fit. Do, do you guys or Michelle, do you recognize the increase in the amount of teacher prep time? Absolutely, because that was one of the things that I believe the previous teams are striving for, an increase in the prep time to, uh, to prep, to get the, the work finished. I think personally, and I maybe I'm speaking out of turn for my team, but I do think that before, if it's the minutes that we are missing, let's, let's follow the policy as written and then reflect on whether or not that is what's working. So if we are losing the extra two days that um, were originally given to district for district PD, just reclaiming those two days, give us a year to see how that, how that falls and how that plays out. And, and another thought process was next year with the, all the new adoptions, um, being able as a staff weekly to implement the new reading adoptions, math adoptions, social studies adoptions, and having those conversations um, as a staff, as grade levels, as this current con um, calendar shows that there wouldn't be consistency with that. All right, thank you. So I think um, we have, um, you know, some discussion points on that one still. Um, and, you know, I, I appreciate um, the Ms. Michella saying um, at this time uh, with the denial. So, um, you know, just like everything else, uh, we're, I think we're, you know, collaborative, um, all, all of us. So um, I appreciate that, that wording. Um, the, is there any other questions or comments before I move on? Okay, I don't see any. Um, so there are no action items, um, other information, uh, requests for future agenda items is information, discussion, and po possible action at a future meeting. Um, I, I would offer that this will be all the current pending ones, uh, the current uh, pending proposals, and there will be a new uh, proposal section as well uh, for our next meeting, uh, which will be held um, on Thursday, March 4th, 2021 at 4 p.m. via Zoom. Any questions about any of that? All right, so I would like to go ahead and move to adjourn the meeting. Ms. Stevens? I second. All right, and I don't believe anyone would be opposed to that. So um, I, I appreciate everyone's time. Um, and look forward to continue uh, working with all of you. So thank you and have a great evening. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone. Have a great evening.